she sends me, she sends an email, and it's to my athletic director. She said, hey, LaVell Moulton, come see me. And I was so paranoid, I didn't even go. And I just kind of ignored it. <laughs> I don't know why, but I was just scared. The following week, we had a staff retreat, and she showed up, and she said, did you get my messages? And I was like, yes, ma'am. She said, I need you to come see me. I had never met this lady, but that's what she's telling me. I need to come see her. And so I finally go up there, and she's like, why Why did you ignore my messages? Why did you not come see me? And I was like, Chancellor, I spent enough time in the principal's office when I was young. Like, I, it was no disrespect, but <laughs> I'm not... I'm not programmed to just want to come up here. So I get up there, and um, she asked me some questions um, about something that was going on. And the crazy thing, and I already know this from being married, when women ask you questions, they already know the answer. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's all, marriage just helped me. Shout out to my wife. Marriage just helped me right here. So when she was asking me, and that look that she was giving me, I was like, yeah, she already know the answers to this. So she just trying to see what kind of character I have. So... I told her the truth, and I, it wasn't easy. And me telling her the truth to those questions she asked me, she could have hated me forever. But afterwards, she said, you don't know me, I don't know you. But she said, I can always trust you because I know I can look you in your face, and as difficult as, as it may be, you'll tell me the truth. And I was like, wow. Like, that was, like, who says that? Like, everybody say they want the truth until they get the truth, and then they hate you even more for giving them the truth. With her, it was just completely opposite. And what that let me know was she wasn't about herself or she wasn't about me. She was just about the totality of these student athletes and them going out here in this real world and um, being successful. And she said, I want them kids to graduate. And I was like, look, I want them to graduate too. So we were on the same accord with that. And then throughout the years, you know, we've we we just developed a great bond. She became like my aunt, and her kids. I call them like my cousins. Like they, we talk all the time. Her brother's like my uncle, and you know, obviously, when she became sick, it, it kind of the first time it didn't throw me for a loop because she called me to the office, and we were talking about something about an event that I that she wanted me to go with her to an alumni event. And at the end of the alumni event, she said, um, I want you to know that I've been diagnosed with cancer. She said, but I don't want you to tell anybody because you're the only one that know that. And I guess, you know, I'm a guy that wears his heart on the sleeve. So what I'm thinking, you know, uh, it showcases itself. It just rocked me for a minute. And she said, don't worry, baby, I'm going to be OK. Like, as a motherhood. <laughs> tap her child on the head. She said, don't worry, I'm going to be okay. And I guess she saw my face. I wasn't okay. I came to down to my office, and I just sat here for a minute, and I was numb. I just needed to get myself together. Fifteen minutes later, it's a knock at the door. It's her and her security guard. And she said, I, I shouldn't have told you that. She said, um, I see how you took that, and I know it's her. And she said, but baby, don't worry about me. I'm going to be okay. She said, you promised me you get your spirits up. And I said, yes. Yeah. So I was like, if she's being that strong, I got to be strong. So you know, I've, she beat it the first time, and it went into remission. And then when it when it resurfaced, she wasn't here, and that kind of concerned me um, a little bit. And she had took a, a, a leave of absence, and I was really worried. I was calling her uh, her kids, I was calling her brothers, and I was sending fl flowers every first of the month. Um, I was trying to send groceries. Um, I wanted a masseuse to go out there and massage her feet and, you know, whatever, anything to make that woman feel better. And I finally talked to her one day. She came here um, at the door. She was making her rounds, and she didn't look herself. And I said, Chance, I'm like, she's like, thank you so much for the flowers. She's such a great man, and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, well, what can I do for you? And she said, just promise me you'll win a championship for me. And I was like, okay. And I never told anybody that. Like, but I just literally promised this woman I was gonna win her championship. And as fate will have it, we won a championship last year. So as I'm cutting down the nets, like I'm just thinking about her. So to honor her, we um, we got the rings. And we got, they'll be in, they're actually in, they're upstairs. And uh, we got a ring ceremony, but 
it's DSW on the rings uh, for Deborah Saunders White. And I thought that would be the most incredible way to honor her legacy and just keep it keep it going on. And I'm, I'm not shy about telling people what she meant to me, what she meant to this university, um, because she was really moving the university forward and I, I loved her for it.